our old friend the internal combustion engine. Over the past 140 years it's provided mobility for billions of people and has been the driving force for entire industry sectors. And all of a sudden it's history. China has officially rolled out a plan to ban gasoline cars. France, the United Kingdom and India, well they're all doing it, phase out gasoline and diesel fueled vehicles. Here in Germany a court has ruled in favor of banning diesel vehicles in parts of Berlin. Why the reversal? For one thing, younger generations have had enough of fossil fuels and their devastating effect on our planet's future. We've just been through the hottest decade ever recorded. And besides climate change, combustion engines spit out pollution that causes millions of deaths each year. Things need to change fast, but the car industry has been skeptical for years. And you want to go 100% electric, that's our, our equivalent of the moonshots. Man darf nicht dem Hype folgen, der derzeit in den Medien vorhanden ist, was Elektrofahrzeuge angeht. I think the analysis that we're going to save the planet with electric cars is nonsense. Some people are claiming, hey, we've got the perfect solution for making the combustion engine carbon neutral. And I would love that, because then I could do this. without having any regrets. And for the sound, it doesn't get better than a petrol engine. Could these be the silver bullets that save the combustion engine? Straw that gets processed into biomethane or fuel that can be created from thin air. So how do they work? Five tons of straw are processed here every hour of every day. Boy, this is a lot of straw. The straw used is what's left over from the harvest. The company Verbio buys it up and turns it into biomethane. Then it's sold to motorists at filling stations. But in Germany, just 100,000 vehicles can run on biomethane or natural gas. Not many considering that there are 47 million cars on the roads. And that's despite the fact that fueling with biogas produces 90% fewer greenhouse gases and it costs a third less than gasoline. But cars that run on it have less mileage, there are only a few gas stations that have it and your ride will cost you heaps more. At the moment, biomethane isn't very popular. Producers say they need more political support. Things need to change at the political level. Biofuels, such as rapeseed oil made locally, have many environmental benefits. But there needs to be a push politically, and a significant carbon reduction commitment has to be in place. The pressure is on to develop new technologies and new biofuels. Alrighty, let's go, let's go, let's go. For a car that runs on biofuel, it's a pretty smooth ride. So there's a myth about these cars that has been busted, but it's a persistent one. So that they don't have the punch I love so much in cars. That used to be a problem, but because the engines got so much more advanced and it's really not longer an issue. And pedal to the metal is still a lot of fun. I love it, mate. The problem is there just isn't enough biomass waste. And that's the major limiting factor for waste-to-fuel proposals. According to Laura Buffet, a clean transport campaigner, the future doesn't look that bright for the technology, but for a good reason. So, I mean, for definition, waste or residues are limited. Uh, materials. Um, also, in our everyday lives, we all try to reduce waste, so we're not looking at a society where we'll have more waste. On the opposite side, we want all to, to produce le less of it. So all of this points out to the fact that there will always be a limited amount of uh, these waste and residues for energy and for transport in particular. Okay, it was worth a try, but fuels from thin air, they could rescue the combustion engine, couldn't they? 
That's what they're working on at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. Inside these containers, hydrogen and air-captured carbon dioxide are turned into gaseous hydrocarbons. Further processing turns them into liquid synthetic fuels. Too good to be true? Well, it works. There are norms in place already in some areas, and our fuel meets them. In other words, I can fill up my car with it and don't need to worry about safety issues when I'm driving around. And the Synfuel can be almost carbon neutral, as long as the entire production process is powered only by excess electricity from renewable sources. But it's still early days for synthetic fuels. But all these electricity-based synfuels have some minor disadvantages. All that green electricity has to be generated in the first place, and that can only happen where there's enough sun, wind, water, or geothermal power. To produce enough e-fuel for all of Germany's transport needs, it would take around half of all the electricity currently generated in the entire country. Synfuels aren't cheap either, about 4 euros 50 a litre. Is there a less expensive way? I visited one of the country's water bottlers, which powers its delivery fleet with synthetic biodiesel. It's produced mainly from edible fats waste. The company prides itself on being carbon neutral, but believes the age of the internal combustion engine has not yet passed. I don't think the combustion engine is dead, but we need customized concepts. Combustion engines will be around for another few years, but there will also be electric cars and hopefully also new technologies. Mobility solutions will have to be customized. I'd say that's the key issue. So is it the end of the road for the tried and trusted technology or not? Well, it doesn't look too good for the combustion engine. Upcoming bans, new technologies, but it won't disappear on us overnight. Biofuels and e-fuel will keep the combustion engine in the mobility mix, at least for long distance trips. It's clear that we'll need all of these technologies, electricity, hydrogen, alternative fuels, to keep our heads above water when it comes to climate change. And for my motorcycles, I hope that they get to keep their petrol engine for a little bit longer.